Hey everyone and welcome back. So, record sales and you know what, it seems like a lot of people are a lot happier than they were in BFA. Now Shadowlands might not be perfect, but at least this, we're not starting off from a baseline of everything being on fire. That's actually quite good. Uh, that should mean that Blizzard, no longer stuck having to fix their launch problems for half an expansion, might actually get to pull off some cool shit for this expansion. I mean, hey, why'd they have to spend all that time making essences and stuff in BFA? It was because they knew they needed something because Azerite was screwed. I mean, hey, look at how good the patches of Mists of Pandaria were, and look at how slick the Legion content flow was. In fact, you could even say it's almost as slick as NordVPN.com forward slash Bellular Gaming, of course, today's sponsor, whose Christmas deal gives you four months free with a two-year plan. And you might be wondering, why get a VPN? It's simple. Do you want to watch content from another region? We've been off in the holidays, trust me. I've been using a VPN a lot. Uh, you know, Japanese Netflix is a handy one, American Netflix as well. But easy, Nord, 5,000 plus servers, choose your location, use the internet like you're in that location. They keep you private so your ISP won't know what you're using. They won't be able to sell your browsing data to advertisers. And they can prioritize some of the traffic you use over others. Also, they're registered in Panama, so your government can't get to them to breach your privacy. The app, the browser extension is super easy to use. You get the four months free with the Christmas deal at my link down below. A big thank you to Nord for sponsoring our team. Uh, more on all the cool things that team is cooking up soon. And with that said, let's get in. Threads of Fate. It's a great idea, but uh, you really can tell they threw that one into the game in late beta. That's because they did. Uh, right now though, it is faster to level up via the regular campaign until you're almost level 60, and then, just then, do you activate Threads of Fate in order to skip the campaign. It's a bit borked. And this actually leaves Threads of Fate in a really, really strange place, but there's two ways out. First, you could keep things essentially the same and then buff XP to be a whole bunch more competitive and then make things like rares and world quests more lucrative. That would be a pretty quick way to get what some people want from that system. Second though, the second way is you could actually keep the current rather moderate pace of Threads of Fate, but you could increase its usefulness to your character. As an example, take players to their Covenant Sanctum as soon as they activate Threads of Fate and just let them get stuck in. Let them do their first two renowned weeklies and work through their Covenant campaign. And even if it's not extremely fast, it would feel a lot more meaningful because you could be doing, say, callings, you could be getting renown and doing all of those things on your level up character. I think that would be great. It would allow you to, from the get go in your new character, get the cool storylines and work towards some of those cool covenant rewards. I mean, it really would not take that much effort to get Threads of Fate to a better place. I would really want to see it be better in like patch 9.1. I think this is pretty high priority. Well, Shadowlands has brought back PvP in a major way. I mean, don't you love being globaled by a sub-rogue? Across the board, though, I have seen so many more people engage with PvP, myself massively included. Why? Well, the sensible gearing, I think, is pretty great. There's less mandatory grindy stuff, and it's just a pretty damn viable thing to do to progress your character. Now, yes, a lot of people think you should be getting more conquest per week. There are concerns like that, but I'm going to say this. With PvP being so much more attractive, it reveals Blizzard's massive underinvestment into PvP. It really does. Because since Legion, we've got one new battleground. Yes, the Azerite one, and uh, it's not really that great, is it? Yeah, the battle for Azeroth didn't bring a battleground. That's a bit loopy, isn't it? Why? Well, okay, let's look back. Blizzard really tried to make Deepwind, Gorge, Kotmogu, and Silver Shard Mine unique, didn't they, right? They threw a gimmick in each of them. And those aren't the game's strongest battlegrounds, right? Yeah, they probably took a bunch of effort. And do remember too, that Deepwind Gorge, the current version that's okay, is only like that because it needed a total rework. Yes. Blizzard, when they try to make new maps, they nobly try to reinvent the wheel, create a crazy new game mode like the Powerball of Kotmogu, um, but they often don't find success when they do that. And seemingly not finding success, they just ended up stopping, because we seriously don't get that many new BGs. 
Shadowlands PvP success means this cannot continue. Here's the thing. Most games have loads of maps per game type, but WoW doesn't do that. Capture the Flag, it's Twin Peaks and Warsong Gulch. Conquest, it's Arithai, it's Steepwind Gorge, and uh, Battle for Gilneas. Those are all really, really old. Everything that I've mentioned there, even though there has been an art refresh. You know, apply the same game mode to various maps, and then what happens is the map layout and the features of a map will make that same game mode feel different to play. And that's why Blizzard really can just go and do loads of capture the flags, loads of conquests, whatever. I mean, especially if Blizzard was to say, commit to using uh, the actual environment and things like that in the design of their PVP levels. So this request is simple. Let's get more capture the flag maps. Let's get more conquest maps. Let's just take the very simple bread and butter basic ass game modes that are clear, simple, fun to play, and quite nice and competitive, and let's just pump more content into the system, because it's really lacking. And yes, I'm leaving Epic Battlegrounds out here, I just don't think they scratch the same itch for a lot of PvPers, because to be honest, I think they're kind of gimmicky. Okay, it's not all PvP love, Mythic Plus. Its first incarnation well, is actually almost identical to what we have today. Now, sure, a few affixes have changed. There are a few seasonal rewards, and there are the cool new seasonal affixes. That's all great, but the overall experience isn't that much different, is it? It's clear, though, now that Mythic Plus is a core gameplay pillar of World of Warcraft. It's here to stay, and I think it deserves better. And what's great here is that Blizzards themselves know this. Ian recently admitted that they basically just haven't done enough to reward people for Mythic Plus and they want to do more. Now, that was more in the context of things like how PvPers get a really cool elite ensemble if they do well. So let's go and talk about that. What is a Mythic Plus 2.0? Firmly looking at the future of this system. Number one, influencing your key. As an example, what if you could re-roll a key to be one of your Covenant's two dungeons? I don't know, that would certainly be neat. It would allow for a little bit more teamwork within a group based on the Covenant's, and especially that's more important now that, you know, there's no Titan Forging, so Biss is Biss at a certain difficulty. Doesn't matter if, you know, the other side is longer than Tyrannus Scythe or whatever. If you want that juicy trinket, you're going to go do it. So the ability to target dungeons and a little bit of control there, I think could be neat. And it could just be done as an experiment. Second, seasonal rewards. Look, I totally think that Mythic Plus players deserve more. I think they should get a set every season. And here's why. Blizzard's not a small indie company. World of Warcraft is one of the largest games businesses out there, and Blizzard certainly can't afford artists, right? I think that raid gear should be raid gear, and I think it would be ideal if Mythic Plus people got a lot more than they currently do. I mean, hell, PvPers, they're often getting their own colors, their sets, right? The whole BFA, you know, tier-based MOG experiment made the whole thing of collecting gear that looks cool in the game just a bit loopy, but I think you get the point here. Gear is fun. New appearances for your character is fun. Each season should bring something new. It does for raiders. It does for PvPers. Doesn't for Mythic Plus people. So come on, let's do it. Okay, another little random thought. Weekly or monthly boss rush challenge. Get Chromie in. String a bunch of bosses together. Increment the keystone level, maybe, with each kill that you get, and see how far people get. You know, you could make the whole thing uh, systemic right in the back end, so it doesn't take heaps of manual upkeep to keep on going, and should something like that be a big gear source? Uh, no, but could it be another fun little way for dungeoneering groups to uh, enjoy an odd evening together? Yeah, it could be, and you know what, in many ways, that's actually what WoW is all about, having a fun evening with your friends. So maybe a boss rush would be kinda neat. Keeping with our last theme, dungeons are becoming more and more important in the game. Yet, Shadowlands only shipped with eight dungeons. That's two less than BFA and Legion. Not good. I generally do actually think, though, that they're incredible dungeons, right? I really do. The likes of the other side are just stunning. But, but, would it be okay to just have more? I think it would. 
And that's where I then think about multi-winged dungeons. That's where, of course, the same tile set is reused across multiple, like how we got Utgard Peak, Utgard Pinnacle, Halls of Lightning, Halls of Stone. Um, now, what's great here is we do have Halls of Atonement, Sanguine Deaths, Castle Nathria. We are actually seeing Blizzard reuse their tile set, and I think that's great because it saves them time. Now, that time, I think, a bit of a priority should be to put that into more content. Now, if you look back at, say, Wrath of the Lich King, you will see extensive tile set reuse for, uh, for the launch dungeons. And to be honest with you, I'm really just saying this publicly because I'd be totally happy for Blizzard to double down on just using the same tile set more. I mean, we had three Auchentoons, and at the end of the day, content is king, right? And while each of Blizzard's dungeons is generally incredible, I would be fine to take a hit to uniqueness of the visuals in the name of actually getting more content out there. I mean, why can there not be another wing to the Spires of Ascension, right? Or another dank, drusty gris pit located in Ardenweald? Why not? So yes, I'm basically doing this to say, Blizzard, reuse the hell out of your art assets, get us a bit more content. Your art assets are great. Okay, Torghast. Well, there's definitely a few things to talk about, but overall, Torghast is a promising format. An idea, right? This big spooky tower of weird things. Here's two ways to expand it that would be awesome for players. Mage Tower 2.0. Look, Torghast is supposed to offer us a tailored tormenting experience. And for free. <laughs> no. Um, but that can surely mean spec-tailored content. Can it? Can't it, right? I mean, seriously, Torghast is the perfect platform for another Mage Tower-like challenge where the Jailer really tries to make things specifically horrible for us. That would be perfect. Second, let's scrap combat. Ultimate Ninja Warrior Azeroth. Let's do it. Why the hell not? Takeshi's Castle. Is Torghast not a crazy experimental funland? And I'm not really just saying that because, uh, oh, it would be neat and cool. But I'd say, how about we double down on obstacles and movement and things just like Mist of Pandaria's Trove of the Thunder King. The Trove of the Thunder King, I don't know if you've done it, but I mean, you'll know it's awesome because, if you've done it, because it's just awesome. It's so much fun. And uh, it was really ahead of its time, right? It was this kind of like... Uh, Basically, Indiana Jones, you're raiding a tomb, you don't have that much time, you got a few traps, a few puzzles, you gotta learn your way about it. It was so cool. And I think the format of Torghast would be perfect for something like it. So yes, Torghast, the tower, is just such a natural place for scary, crazy, spooky, bizarre gameplay experiments like these things. Things like the Deaths of Chromie. Do you remember how cool that was? And of course, the Trove of the Thunder King. That really shows us that the WoW devs, when they're a little bit freed up from having to make everything fit into a gearing system, they can really do incredible stuff. So Torghast is the perfect canvas. Pretty excited to see how they use it. Class sets are returning, and Ian clearly indicated they would return in a different form in a recent interview. So yes, different from their old incarnation. What does that mean? Hard to say. But it is a massive opportunity. Personally, I think they should make each new season's gear function like Legion Artifact Weapons. And I do not mean that from a player power perspective, obviously. I mean that from a visual cosmetic progression perspective, where you could be unlocking different variants and then different tints by doing content within that season. Now, functionally, yes, you would still hit up the raid and get the gear, but also you'd be building, well, your collection while you're doing that. And I think that would be a massive force multiplier on the content that Blizzard is doing that would drive a whole bunch of gameplay. It would, and this is key, just allow for more character progression. Because imagine, right, you get your seasonal set from Raid, PvP, or Mythic Plus, but then, just because this system happens to exist, oh, this patch, there's an additional side story. Maybe you go back to Molten Core, it's been invaded, this cool little storyline happens, you kill a five-player boss, and you unlock a new tint for that season set, right? This would basically be a system and a framework that would allow Blizzard to do a lot more with each season. I think that would make players quite uh, quite excited. So that could be tints, that could be add-ons, little bits of flair, but you get the point. And rather than commit to this forever, because this would obviously be a massive commitment, I think what we should maybe do is field test it with some sort of big patch feature that brings this in for one patch 
in a pretty controlled way so we can then see, oh, do players like this? Do they engage with this? If so, let's carry it forward. And you know what? I suspect Shadowlands is actually going to do something like this because Ian really did tease that the tier sets are coming back and that they're using the old version there as a baseline, right, as a template, but that they're carrying it forward to be new and that really it's it's stuff like that collection gameplay that's the core of what's, uh, you know, what's driving them. They know the players care about that. So it seems like they're really aware that there's a problem here. It seems like they're actually trying to work at an innovative solution. And that actually does mean I'm quite excited for whatever they announce at BlizzCon Line. Okay, quick fire time. The pre-made group finder kinda sucks. Let's be able to filter out search terms like WTS, want to sell, wouldn't that be nice? Let us filter by keystone level. Let us filter by, I don't know, PVP rating, things like that. Next, let's skip the more intro on alts. Come on, Legion did this, PFA did this, why not Shadowlands? There is more than enough experience in the zones to get people to cap. Orbos could then use some love. I just say, let's have a few more mailboxes and come on. Let's just be able to mount up a lot more than we can already in Orbos, because right now it does feel a bit inconsistent that like, you're mounted, you go through an arch for a small period of time, you're not mounted, and you can mount again. And it just isn't a great flow. Personal loot, let's relax that item level requirement. It is good to help out your friends in video games, right? Look, the people who actually stick around the longest and are going to be the highest value to Blizzard, like financially as customers, are the people who play the game the longest. And generally, that is people who are in guilds, who are in a social circle in the game. And I think that means we should be optimizing for that experience of people who are playing a massively multiplayer online game in a multiplayer way. So yeah, let's make some tweaks to personal loot. Legion scaling, okay? Doing mythic legion raids at level 60 is harder than it is at level 50. And that's because the scaling is literally just not working right. This was discovered a long time ago in the testing. Blizzard haven't fixed it. Yeah, it was easier for me to do mythic legion raids last February during BFA than it is right now. This is locking off a bunch of fun transmogrification hunting from people, and that's especially since Legacy Loot Mode is active for Legion content, so that normally would be a lot of gameplay. So fixing that one is a no-brainer. Then the mission table. Come on! It's really funny The Blizzard actually went and tried and made an actual combat system that's a lot more involved for the mission table and like the little auto-battler, um, and then they didn't actually put that much content in it bit weird. So perhaps something like maybe the Legion Champion upgrades, remember the legendary ones, those are kind of cool. Maybe some harder missions, a few more things, that'll be good, but come on, we can do more there. Okay, that's mostly it for my big and then list of small requests. As always, there are, you know, there are some other things like the Maw, a lot more could be done there. I'm just fairly sure the Blizzard already have like a big plan for the Maw. And then there is certainly a lot of people who they hit Shadowlands and I think they are beginning to just get a little bit overwhelmed. Like they go to their Covenant Sanctum. I've seen loads of these people in like my Twitter replies saying that they've, they feel like they've been bombarded with, you know, a bunch of systems and things and they don't really know what they're doing and they can't actually get engaged with the expansion. Um, so I wonder if that's just the storyline bouncing off people, the setting bouncing off people, and then some people who are quite intimidated by systems, like seeing, oh, the conduits and the charges and the this and the that and the Queen's Conservatory and the, you know, everything, and maybe just getting a bit stressed out. So I would wonder, are you one of those people? Um, have you been able to change that for yourself? Are there any things a Blizzard could do? Do you feel that two renowns per week is a bit slow and you feel overly thralled in playing the game. Certainly as a raider, I've had a great time because I can raid log, do a few other odds and ends, and I'm actually just really happy with my experience. But it could be for a lot of very solo people who don't want to do raiding M plus and PVP that they're feeling that it's a little bit barren. So I'd like to know what you think and your suggestions are. But with that said, that's mine. If you would like to get some VPN goodness so that you can surf all over the various regions of the world as you do your Netflix and your Amazon Prime, then you can check out Nord in that description down below. A big thank you to them for sponsoring. And with that said, well, I will see you next time. <laughs>